Gregory Peck, Lee Remick, The Omen. If this is the truth, where does it end? Welcome back to the seventh annual Halloween special. It's so great to be talking about horror films some more. This is the best time of year. I'm so excited to be talking to you about a 1970s horror classic known as The Omen. This film was directed by Richard Donner right before he made Superman the movie. And it stars Gregory Peck as a father who's beginning to suspect that his son has something very wrong with him. Many strange occurrences keep happening around this boy. People are dying. Animals are losing their minds. And before too long, he has to look the ugly truth right in the face. His son is the Antichrist. Largely due to Rosemary's Baby in 1968 and The Exorcist in 1973, the 70s were huge for satanic horror. There was quite a bit of it. And The Omen is certainly one of the best. The interesting thing about that era is that nowadays there's exorcism movies like every year. There's like a few every single year. And usually... They're pretty bad because all of the best ideas have been done and rarely do they ever achieve the type of depth or characterization that those films, including The Omen, achieved. And there was something dreadfully serious about those movies and especially The Omen. This film never feels tongue in cheek. It could be ludicrous. It could be taken in a way that's comical, but it never feels that way because of Richard Donner's sure hand behind the camera, the script that is marvelously tension filled and the great performances all the way throughout. Now, if you haven't seen The Omen, I must say I'm going to talk some spoilers. It's been out for a very long time. If you haven't seen the film, you should check it out. It's a good movie. We're going to talk about some spoilers because there's just certain things about this film that I love that I have to say. Namely, the deaths. The Omen has some of the best on-screen deaths ever. Extremely shocking. One of them in particular is jaw-dropping. Horror movies love to use photographs. It's a very common device used to build tension and suspense. Sometimes it's a bit of a trope. In the case of The Omen, they do some of their best work with these photographs because some people catch sight of themselves in the mirror or a photo of them is taken and something about this photo is odd. One in particular early on, there's a dark line through this guy's face. And they keep reminding you about this photo, letting you understand its importance. And if you've seen a lot of horror movies, you just think that a mystery is building. And eventually you're going to get that answer, maybe towards the end. Not in the case of The Omen. I remember the first time I saw that. It was such a great reveal. Donner lingers on that wide shot for an uncomfortable amount of time, letting it sink in. And of course, there's the woman who, in full view of the public, hangs herself after saying, it's all for Damien. It's all for you. That shit is awesome. I mean, it's fucked up, but it's really well done, and it's always unsettling every time I watch it. But easily, the best death in this movie is the sheet glass decapitation. But like I said, this film is filled with dread. It's constantly suspenseful. Gregory Peck takes everything pitch perfect seriously. This is one of his best performances. And like most great horror films, the trauma and the pressure of a crumbling family life keeps us invested in these characters because both him and his wife have no idea what's going on with their boy. And going into the film, you expect it to be, oh, the kid's evil and he's gonna kill people or people around him will die. But the mystery that unfolds surrounding him is so much deeper than that. It's far more evil than just the idea of this being Satan's offspring. Oftentimes, what's most frightening to me in horror are things that are suggested. The thought behind a horrible act or the way someone died. Maybe you don't see the way they die. You just become aware of it because of the things the characters uncover. In this case, Gregory Peck discovering that his real son was taken from him and killed. He finds his son's grave and you see this little infant skeleton. That's fucking terrifying. But I've been holding off on talking about my favorite aspect of this movie because I really like this movie. I think it's a good film. I don't think it's a great film like, say, The Exorcist. 
but I do think it's a really good movie. And that being said, I oftentimes think about scores that are actually better than the film. And in the case of The Omen, Jerry Goldsmith's Oscar winning score, I think is better than the whole movie. Keep in mind, I think this is a really good movie, but Jerry Goldsmith's themes are haunting. The score drenches this movie in sorrow and pain, and it's fast, and it feels way ahead of its time. And there hasn't been a score of this nature for a horror film about demons or satanic presences that hasn't in some way borrowed from Jerry Goldsmith's work. There were no other Oscar nominations for this movie, just Goldsmith's song and score. There's a scene where Gregory Peck is attacked, and it's a pretty long scene, and it's exciting, but it's mostly exciting because of Jerry Goldsmith's score. The direction and the stunt work is seriously lacking throughout most of this scene, but it's the music that makes it so intense. <laughs> Richard Donner had two of the greatest film scores ever back to back with this and then John Williams' Superman. That must have been crazy for him sitting in that sound booth listening to this soundtrack and then later Superman. I mean, that is just like, I've often fantasized about being a director and having like this incredible score to your film being played to you for the first time. That must have been remarkable because this score is an all timer. I suppose most of my issues with the movie are some things that haven't aged very well. Most of them are shots that linger a bit too long, an edit that isn't as tight as it could be. There are scenes that don't feel like they actually have to be in the movie from time to time, just some baggage scenes that I think maybe in 2019 might have been cut. Some people might think, well, that's a bad thing. You're, you're cutting things that make the movie feel special. But there are some scenes that feel like double beats, like we've heard this before and now we're being reminded again and sometimes it's even triple beats. We're getting a third reminder of something and we know this already. We don't need the reminder. And that is the only thing that I think keeps this film from being as good as something like The Exorcist. It's not as rewatchable as The Exorcist either, nor is it as scary as The Exorcist, but I don't always like to compare it to other films that are similar, but it's kind of hard not to since they came out you know, within a three year period and it's obviously a film that was inspired in some way by The Exorcist. I still think this is a really fun movie and I've always enjoyed The Omen, especially Jerry Goldsmith's score. I'm gonna give The Omen an A minus. Guys, thank you for continuing to watch the seventh annual Halloween special. We've got a lot more stuff coming your way very soon. As always, if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.